This is an I Am Listening exclusive podcast. I have two kind of real main messages. One is about doing whatever it takes to be healthy, happy and successful in your life. And what I have found is that if I can live on purpose, with passion, in peace, that makes me happy. You are listening to the Don't Be a Stranger podcast. On each episode, I'll be travelling across the UK to interview members of the general public anonymously on various topics that crop up in all of our lives. Psychological studies have even suggested that when in conversation with a stranger, they can actually reveal more information than to someone in their own social circle. So whilst I traipse across the UK in locations such as parks, cafes, seasides and high streets, you can sit back, relax and listen to the tales and perspectives of the members of our general public. Today's episode is about happiness, something we all surely want in life. But if I asked you, are you happy? What would you say? For most, the answer would be different depending on the day. And that's the thing with happiness. It isn't static. It fluctuates all the time. And if it didn't, happiness would have no meaning. One thing that I've only recently just discovered about happiness is that you can't assume someone is happy just because they're super smiley or the life and soul of a party. The only way to at least attempt to find out how someone is truly feeling is by actually asking them how are they really doing. Hi, how are you is a common greeting here in the UK and across all the world. But how many times have you responded to a work colleague, friend or even a stranger with good thanks you? Even though you're not feeling good at all. First of all, acknowledging that you aren't doing well is a step forward, but also having more open conversations with whomever you cross paths with in life will massively help. Chances are you're not alone. Of course, there isn't a one size fits all secret to happiness, but I'm going to try my best to find one by asking strangers on today's episode if they truly are happy and if so, how they are able to have such a positive mindset. This first interview took place in the lanes of Brighton. I overheard this lady having a conversation at a jeweler's trying to get her ring fixed and she seemed very bubbly. So when she'd finished chatting, I went up to her to try and find out her opinion on happiness and how she's really feeling within. If I were to ask you, are you happy? What would you say? I'd say that I choose happiness every day. I love that approach. Not many people say that. You choose happiness every single day. What's made you had that mindset to think like that? Yeah, I had, I had a major shift. I mean, I'm always quite happy. I'm, I can't remember a time in my life when I... Well, maybe when I was a child. So when I was really young, I probably was not happy at all. But I think in my early 20s, I realised that happiness is a choice. Yeah. And so as soon as I understood that, well, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? And they do every day. And that's through yoga, really. That's how I came to kind of understand it through my spiritual practice. They do say that when you're like 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, they're like the ages that you hit reality, you realise things and your whole mindset on stuff changes because they don't teach you at all in school. But um, yeah, so how has yoga like made you feel happy then? Just to say that you're quite right, they don't teach you that in school. But I also think that 19 is quite young as well to kind of stumble on something that's more meaningful in your life so that you can create happiness and even be out in the street asking other people if they're happy. In my early 20s, I had set up a fashion business. So I had this successful fashion business. So you ran it all yourself and set it up, oh my God, that's amazing. And I grew it all myself and it was was amazing. But I think after a few years of success in that, I kind of asked the question, you know, there must be more to life. And I went in search of it. Yeah. And I think I think that's the thing. Like I think you aim for a goal, and you're like, I'll be happy once I get here. And then you get there, and then you're like, right, what's next? And you're always looking ahead rather than sometimes like being present in the moment. But it could be, as you say, you know, it could be that you're kind of like looking for something. You have a goalpost. Yeah. I think for me, I kind of satisfied something. So in having that business, I kind of proved to myself that I could do whatever I put my mind to. Self-care is really important. I think understanding that we determine our own destiny is really important. I think realising that we make choices all the time, so we might as well choose what it is that we actually want and focus on it 
So for me, there's always going to be stuff that can make you unhappy. I personally choose to limit how much I focus on that. And so if I'm left with, I'm breathing, I'm still going to be happy. Yeah. Do you have, you seem like a very like optimistic person. Do you have any advice for someone that isn't feeling like this or advice that you'd give to your past self if you, when you weren't so happy that you wish you could have known? Yeah, I mean, I think I am a born optimist, but I think it's to actually understand that we can choose our own destiny and also that, you know, for somebody who's not happy or has got issues or got things that are actually going on, yeah. then there are tools that can support that. And for yeah. me personally, that has been yoga, meditation, relaxation, mindfulness, all of those yeah. things. Is there, because I've wanted to like get into stuff like that, is there any, because obviously when you like look it up, it's a bit of a minefield and it's like, how do I like find that how did you get into that did you just like read books did you learn from other people how what made you get into that first of all i think there's enough time because there's what 1440 minutes in every day so that's a priority issue around around the time part um but i think i mean i actually write books so i do kind of advocate books but i think you can't learn everything from books so it's about practice so, you know, depending on, you know, where people are at in terms of their budget, there's so much, you know, get onto YouTube so that you yeah. can learn something and start putting it into practice. You said you've been writing books now. Um, what, are you, what are you writing? So I have what is now a kind of classic book. So it's older than you. Yeah. <laughs> so that book's been out for 21 years. It's called right, okay. Opening to Spirit. And it's a book on chakras and spirituality and mythology and also African history. Oh my God. All kinds of things. That's amazing. Yeah, That's Opening to Spirit. Amazing. It's a classic book. It's got so much. And then I also have uh, another book called Way of the Chakras. Mm -hmm. And I have three others that are all kind of personal development, spiritual yeah. development. I definitely think it's like a way to find Zen in your life and be happy and like accept that not everything's amazing and learning how to deal with it but I've definitely got a long way to go with it. Not everything is amazing as you say but also that you can always find the amazing yeah. you know so even when things are really really challenging and, and sometimes for people in their most challenging moments is where they find the magic mm. so I just think it's always there but we have to have the mindset so we have to set the mind differently so that we actually look for those things because they're always there. Yeah, I definitely think it's like, I know they're just phrases, but it's definitely about finding like the silver lining and thing. And some people's mindsets are initially go to that straight away, but others don't. And it's like learning like you can rewire your brain to do that. But I think a lot of people just think that they're alone. And doing this podcast, I think we've both realised that a lot of people aren't as happy they may look really happy on the outside and they're not and it's just that everyone's not alone but you can rewire your brain to do that and you've obviously I'm not saying you're 100% there because everyone's got room for growth but you seem that you're definitely on the track and you're right it's about rewiring your brain it's about I mean for me it's about being empowered you know and my work is about energizing and empowering people so that we actually understand that we get to choose so even if it's really you know challenging painful whatever's going on sometimes people really find the kind of magic in those most challenging yeah. moments. Yeah, definitely. Just to know that potential is always there. Yeah. yeah, potential for happiness is always there. If I were to ask you like, how much of your life do you think and your happiness is controlled by you, I feel like a lot of it you think is you, but do you think a lot of it is circumstances as well? Well, for me personally, I'm not going to really allow circumstances to determine my inner state. Yeah, I don't want to do that because that could be really troublesome. Because yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think there are always things around us that could throw us off course. Yeah. If you're looking for them, you're always going to find them. And so for me, as I say, I think I started out, I'm an eternal optimist. I'm the kind of person that makes people feel sick, to be honest, <laughs> because, because I'm always going to see, you know, what's working, I'm not going to think anything's going to go wrong. 
you know. It's definitely the outlet to have and to, because I've seen a lot of people today like be on their own and have like days out on their own, but they're not happy, but you're like having a day out on your own. I do the same and I'm just making the most of it and like self-care day and just focusing on yourself and yeah. And little things did happen like just then with the ring. So nice, that was so nice. And I also think it's about self-care, it's about self-love, you know, because if you can't be on your own and spend time by yourself, how would you expect other people to be with you? Yeah. if you can't be you know with your, with yourself but I think that was just beautiful that I just literally stopped and asked ask someone for help that's another thing really because mm. sometimes you don't want to ask people for help yeah. and I wasn't expecting that to be you know so he literally first of all pointed me in the direction of help mm. but then when he understood what I actually wanted he went over and above to yeah. help yeah. you know I think that's the thing and I think like you can never you can literally never judge a book by its cover and like that's another thing that I was hoping to do by this is like now like hopefully if you ever saw someone that was looking a bit I'm sure you would anyway I'm getting the vibe anyway but if you ever saw someone then you would go and approach them and spread a bit of happiness and maybe it spread a bit of happiness to the guy in the shop just talking about it I think something else that you're really kind of highlighting is moving outside of comfort zones and that's what you're doing yeah. and and for me when I kind of saw you had a mic I'm like uh <laughs> yeah, the look people get straight away, they're like, what is going on? But yeah. So I think we have to be prepared as well to kind of get more comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think that happiness is there. You know what I mean? I think that when we're willing, like just being away, I don't live in London. I mean, I don't live in Brighton. You don't live in Brighton. It's about being outside your normal kind of comfort yeah. zone as well that supports something different. Yeah. You know? And don't get me wrong, like the process of getting here hasn't been all like plain sailing like my mum's with me today and she's seen me go up to people and really like have to psych myself up to go up to people but then look at the conversation that's come from it and it'll probably stick with you I hope and it's definitely going to stick with me so I think it's just like encouraging people I think we have got quite far with it in the day and age we're in with like being out of your comfort zone but I think there's still a way to go and it's just encouraging young people like me to do it but yeah a um, bit of a conversation change do you have like any a message if you could give a message to the entire world like the entire world, just one message, what would it be? I can give you a bit of time to think about it or you don't need any time. <laughs> I have two kind of real main messages. Yeah. One is about doing whatever it takes to be healthy, happy and successful in yeah. your life. And what I have found is that if I can live on purpose, with passion, in peace, that makes me happy. Yeah. I love the way this lady put stuff so simply, but she's so right. The fact that she says happiness is a choice. And if you're always looking for the negatives, you're always going to find them. I think for me anyway, she's spot on. This next interview, it's a short interview. I caught this lady who was sitting on a bench, but she had to rush off for a appointment pretty soon after. So it's short but sweet, but I still found out if this lady is really happy and what her view on the topic is. Are you happy? I would say 45% of the time. 45% of the time. What would you say in that 45%, what would you say like the source of your happiness is? Uh, my kids, my dogs, my garden, yeah. my blog. Would you say that a lot of that happiness is like circumstances rather than you controlling your own happiness? Um, yes, COVID hasn't helped for sure. And being away from family is a big source of my unhappiness. So obviously now like restrictions have lifted and we can do st more stuff that makes us happy. If we were to go into another lockdown, God hope we don't, but if we were, would you have any advice that you would give to yourself for that time where you weren't feeling great in lockdown or for anyone that is feeling a bit rubbish right now? Um, try and reach out to friends as much as possible on the phone, on Zoom, over Skype, whatever works. Um, and family, obviously, not just friends. Um, but also reach out to strangers, say, how are you feeling? If you see someone who's not hoping very well. The man you're about to listen to is homeless in the streets of Brighton. Now, every single person that walked past this guy, he would look up to them and say, hello, how are you? Majority ignored him, but no matter what the response the person gave him, he would still have a smile on his face. I had to find out if he truly is feeling happy within. Was it just an exterior? And if it's not, 
How is he remaining so positive when he's constantly being ignored? Are you right if I sit down here? Yeah? So, yeah, basically I'm doing an episode on happiness and, yeah, and what makes people happy. And whilst doing this, what I've realised is that a lot of people that on the outside may look happy, they're actually not on the inside. And I thought if I asked you, like, what sort of percentage of happiness would you say you've got in your life? What would you, would you, Could you give me a number or how you feel? Um, oh, well, I don't know. If, uh, if you'd asked me weeks ago, I wouldn't have been too happy mm. because, uh, yeah, I just broke up with my ex. But, yeah, no, right now I'm about 70, 75% 75 happy, yeah. happy. Yeah. Do you know what, though? That's actually amazing because we've gone up to people today who look like they should be really happy in their lives and they've given us such lower numbers than that, like yeah. 30s, like, and the fact that you're out here and you can give us a number like that, I think that's so, like, I respect that so much. That's amazing. Um, so, obviously, you said, like, circumstances happen. I'm sorry to hear that, that a few weeks ago that made you feel a bit shit yeah. but how have you managed to like stay to that 75 percent happy because i feel like you've got a great method going on there yeah no, yeah, no i just um i read a lot of books and mm. i talk to people so i do yeah yeah uh, yeah just talk to people about life and all that yeah yeah no, that's amazing do you think a lot of happiness then is to do with how it's in your head like how you control it or do you think it is circumstances yeah no it's all in your head so it is yeah yeah if you control in your head do you know what i mean it will show. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Have you got any like aspirations you've got in your life that you want to do? Um, no, I know right now. I've no thought about anything. Mm. Yeah, and no, I just want to get back off the streets in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'll definitely get there. The thing is, like, I think with the mindset you've got, like, you definitely will get there. Just don't give up on it. Yeah. But um, do you have any advice that you could give to someone that isn't? Um, just don't don't be negative. Mm. Yeah, just think positive. Yeah. If you're negative, then you always be yeah. doing, yeah. yeah. So uh, my ex-partner, she was a negative thinker, and I tried to get her out of mm. being negative, you know what I mean? Try to get her to think positive all the time. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, it's just your mindset. Just think positive and things will happen. Yeah, I think it's very easy just to always think of the negative, but I just think it's amazing that, like, even in a situation like this, and we've had other people who have said a lot lower, and you've got that mindset, but seriously, don't give up on it because you will get off the streets and you will get there. <laughs> What an amazing mindset this guy has. It's interesting because the second stranger you listen to on this episode, you obviously can't see what she looks like, but she looks like a lady that's got her life together. I don't know how to best describe that to you. She was in quite a professional outfit. Her hair's all done. Her makeup's made up. But she is 45% happy. Whereas a man who is homeless on the streets of Brighton can sit here and say that he is 75% happy. It shows that happiness is about being content with what you have. Let's get to the next guest on today's episode. This stranger was the first stranger I ever interviewed for my podcast. I was doing things a little bit differently. So this interview was back in 2020 in a park in Maidstone. And rather than approaching strangers myself, I was testing them coming to me. It didn't work. I had two camping chairs, two microphones, mic stands and a big sign that said, don't be a stranger podcast, come chat with me. Let's just say no one came and chatted with me. But this one guy walked past me at the start of the day and at the end of the day saw that I wasn't having much luck and came and sat with me and had a chat with me. I did actually record for another episode, which you will hear later on down the line. But he was so optimistic and had such a positive mindset. I had to ask him about his views on this topic. If I were to ask you, like, what actually makes you happy? It doesn't have to be one thing. But is there anything that like a few things stand out to you? I mean, you have got your girlfriend sitting here. So <laughs> but other than that, what does make you happy? Contrast, I think. Mm. Like, We've been talking about this quite a lot recently, but it's um, there's a film actually that really, really hits it on the head. It's uh, Hector in the Search for Happiness. I haven't even heard of that. I'm going to watch that. Check when it I get out. Home. It's Simon Pegg, um, right? Okay. Lee, and he plays a psychiatrist that's trying to work out what happy is because he realizes he's not making his patients any happier. He's right. just talking through a bunch of jargon essentially, but. The conclusion I'm now going to spoil for you before you go home and watch it. That's um, absolutely fine. But is the realization that happiness is about all the emotions. It's about 
sadness. It's about everything. It being right. able to have its own space. So yeah, you're never okay. going to be able to control everything. You're never going to be able to control what happens to you in a day. Um, things can go bad all the time, but it can be just th- on a day like this. Mm. You can feel like it's flopping. You can get really frustrated. Everything can be going wrong. Yep. And then we have a conversation and you look much happier look now, Look how happy right? I am. I think I had a tear down my eye when you came over. I was trying to wipe it quickly, but um, yeah, no, you're completely right. But if your chair hadn't broken, you'd be slightly less happy right now. It's the contrast that's brought you yeah. back. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's an up and down kind of frequency. It's not just everything always being good. It's I've not never just heard anyone say that answer before. That's happiness. like a really, yeah, that's a really cool way to look at it, actually. I feel like a lot of people put pressure on themselves because you're not always going to be happy 24-7. It's just having enough. And we all have enough. It's just having the perspective to enjoy that. This man's outlook made me have such a different view on happiness. You would typically associate happiness with positive things but actually it's all about accepting all the emotions in life because he's right there's not always going to be everything's plain sailing everything's brilliant it's life there's always going to be negativities and if you can accept all of them then maybe you might be happy it's such an interesting concept that he looked at there I also purchased Hector and the Search for Happiness and I cannot recommend it enough So I will link it in the show notes if any of you guys are interested in that. I think there are 24 lessons that he learns along the way. So yeah, definitely check it out if you are interested in the concept that this stranger was talking about. Let's get to the last stranger on today's episode. I'm not going to lie. I smile when I think about this interview and you will see why in a minute. This interview took place in a park and let's just say... It's an interesting one. Let's see what this stranger thinks about happiness and if he is truly happy inside. Are you happy? Or you can say yes or no or give me sort of like a percentage of like how happy you are or are you happy? What would you say to that? I'd say that's an interesting question because can you define happy a bit better for me first? Well, I think that's another question that I had is like, what does happiness mean to you? Everyone probably perceives it as something very different. Um, But when you think happiness, what do you think of personally? Because I think some people say circumstances, some people say how they feel from within. Um, But yeah, when you think of happiness, what what would come to your mind? So my, my version of happiness or my opinion on it has changed recently. Because we're told, we're told a lot uh, by media and by wellness authors and so on that they have the formula for happiness. But they're selling us a happiness. Yeah, that's very true. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So my opinion has changed very much. And I think if you're noticing every moment, then you're happy. Yeah. So what would you say that your opinion on it was before then? Were you following what the sort of media was saying and looking ahead no, I was never comfortable. That never sat well with me because I, I see that uh, people are paying money to someone to tell them how to be happy, which is just another version of consumerism and attaining um, the chattels of wealth yeah. in the pursuit of happiness. Um, what do you think about like, do you, like social media? Do you think we focus too much, not just social media, just in general? Do you think as the media and as human beings as a whole, do you think we sometimes focus too much on getting to the happiness and we don't ever like, live in the present? Or do you think that doesn't really apply to you? Or do you think like on social media where you're comparing yourself to other people's happiness, do you think that's causing a lot of people in the world to be unhappy? Or do you think it's just more stuff from what's within? I think a lot of people are competing on social media to demonstrate that they're happy, happier than they are. And it's almost a competition and I don't like the like culture especially. And I think it drives people to write things that are to attract likes and make themselves feel better about themselves. Yeah, and that's the thing, I've spoken to people that have do get that many likes but then you get to that point and are they really happy no because they're just looking for the next thing and it's always going to be someone that maybe gets one more and it's always that I feel like we've all been brought up in that culture and bit of a change of subject but what advice would you give to someone that maybe 
doesn't have like the outlook that you have that you because obviously you've changed it um what advice would you give to someone that maybe doesn't see a light at the end of the tunnel or is finding it like impossible to find happiness right now slow down i'll slow down i'll start again do you have oh i thought you meant to me <laughs> I thought you literally went to me, slow down. And I was like, okay, I'll redo it. So you would you would ask people to slow down. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit more? Yes, slow down. Walk more slowly. Feel your feet walking. Meditation isn't just about breathing. Meditation is about everything you do. Eat more slowly. Taste the food. Feel the texture of the food. Feel the wind on your face, notice things, notice your clothes on your body, notice other people. I sort of like the, I don't know if you're familiar with like the Danish sort of perspective, it's, I'm going to pronounce this awfully, but it's huga, is that the right pronunciation? But it's that sort of perspective-ish where you're sort of finding comfort in like the smaller things and just appreciating everything. I might have got that wrong if you may know more on this than me, but it's sort of that sort of perspective you appeal to have nailed that <laughs> perfectly yeah. and I do think because uh, Denmark and Finland are obviously like the happiest countries in the world and I feel like maybe it's something that we need to do a little bit more because not everyone does I have one more thing to add many studies have demonstrated that the larger the inequality that's the gap between the wealthiest and the poorest in the country is a very good indicator of the happiness of that society and this is proven and has been researched so this is why America is the most unhappy country because the gap is huge this is why the Nordic countries who spend money they're socialist countries it's proof that socialism is the way and it makes everyone happy That is the last stranger on today's episode. Can I just say, a lot of these interviews were recorded during lockdown. But one thing that has still stuck with me to this day about the advice that the strangers gave me is how important it is to be content with what you already have in life and how far we've all already come. Sometimes it's easy to sort of always want more and look ahead. I do it a lot. But actually sitting down and realising what you have already... It makes me happy instantly anyway. Hopefully the perspectives of the strangers on today's episode will help you find or maintain your happiness in one way, shape or form. To see more content and advice from the strangers that I meet along the way, make sure to follow Don't Be A Stranger podcast on Instagram and TikTok and check out our website, don'tbeastranger.co.uk. Thank you all so much for listening and I'll catch you on next week's episode. This has been an I Am Listening original podcast. For more information, head over to our website at im-listening.co.uk. Listener.